So one of the major components of building the ribs in the Super Baby Great Lakes is a whole slew of this quarter inch by quarter inch spruce. It's used for the cap strips, which are the top and bottom pieces of each rib. And it's used for all the bracing that goes in the, in the middle of the rib, kind of fills in the gaps and provides the structure of the rib and gives it its rigidity and strength. So what I'm doing now, I got 100 feet of it. And it came in three foot chunks, which is a little bit more than you need for each of the cap strips. And then you just cut it down into smaller pieces for all the, the structural pieces that fill in the gaps between the top and bottom cap strips. What I'm doing is just going through the whole pile of pieces. It came in two big bundles. And I'm inspecting each piece. Um, I want ideally pieces with the uh, closest grain and uh, I want the grain to run crossways so it's nice and flexible in the direction that it needs to bend. Um, any pieces that are missing chunks I'm going to set aside and I can just cut around those little pieces to use in the, the structure in between the cap strips. Um, because you'll just cut the cut the piece into small small chunks and you can just ignore the the part where there's a chunk missing or if there's a knot I don't want to use those in the middle of a cap strip so I set aside the the worst pieces and now I'm making one more pass scrutinizing each piece a little bit more to make my final selections for what will be the cap strips So here's a knot right smack in the middle of this 36 inch cap strip. So I will definitely, or this uh, 36 inch piece of quarter by quarter spruce, obviously I won't use it as a cap strip. I can just cut around that little knot and have lots of good material left for the braces that go in the middle of the rib. But I will set this aside so I don't inadvertently use it as a cap strip. Always inspect your materials. Don't just blindly throw them into your plane. So I'm ready to start gluing up the ribs or epoxying them up as it were. I rounded over the front corners of of some of these quarter by quarter inch cap strips so that they fit into that corner left by the router bit. Um, the epoxy is just the epoxy that Aircraft Spruce sends to you when you buy the woods package for the wings. It's made by Forest Products Laboratory and so they just call it FP FPL 16A. You mix 10 parts of the resin with one part hardener and I just bought this um, graduated cylinder. It was this tall originally and I just cut it down and I just add, you can sort of see the 10 there. So I add resin. I've got a little <clears throat> um, I've got a syringe here. I just suck the resin out of this, squirt it in there until it's up to the 10 mark and then the next major mark on there um, I just dribble in some hardener until I get to the next mark 
and then I use pop a popsicle stick and I mix it thoroughly. Then I use one of these little glue brushes. And I got a box of 500, and you'll go through a lot of them. So just buy a big box like this off of Amazon or somewhere. And I use this and just dip it in there and spread it around. So I'll glue this one on here, or epoxy this on here. And my idea, which I didn't do last time, I don't remember how I did it before, but um, the idea is just to take one clamp, clamp it on the front, take another clamp, clamp it on the rear, to hold the spruce into this real slight curve that I machined into the nose rib. Then I'll do the next one. And I round it, actually I, I round it over more than I can use tonight. I can only glue up as many as I have ability to clamp. So I think I'll be able to clamp up um, about 10 nose ribs along with the cap strips. And the instruction book tells you to glue these cap strips onto the nose rib first as the first step. And after that, you can take that assembly put it into your jig and begin assembling the rest of the rib. So, it's kind of deja vu here, building my ribs again, but I'm definitely on the way to better quality ribs than the first time. So, I'll mix up the resin and glue some of these guys together. So these are my first glue ups. And I really like how these clamps work. They're only a buck each. I'll probably buy some more of them. You can't have too many clamps. And make sure when you put the clamps on here, run your finger along both sides of this joint. Don't worry about getting epoxy on your fingers. You want to make sure that those are flush. Which will tell you that this cap strip is parallel and lined up properly with the nose rib. So just run your fingers on both sides. Make sure it's flush. If not, you can relieve a little pressure on the clamp. Just squeeze down on it and squeeze your fingers together. Then let go of the clamp to get that realigned. So I really like using these clamps. So I'll pick up some more tomorrow, I think, and glue up some more ribs. And you're going to have to throw away epoxy sometimes because um, you've got to mix it at the right ratio. So you've got to mix a certain amount at a minimum but sometimes you won't have a whole lot of stuff to glue up so don't worry about having to throw it away just dump it out clean out your container and don't worry about the small amount that you've thrown away it's par for the course so having this curve here which is what you end up with with that router bit and curving the end of the cap strip it doesn't help the cap strip stay put when you first epoxy it because there's nothing really holding it in just that epoxy and it tends to want to pop loose once you start bending on it and so forth to uh, to add the gussets and so forth so I think I'm gonna go back for the remaining ribs I've done a few of these but for the rest of them I think I'm gonna go back and do what I was gonna do initially which is to take a, a chisel and notch this, go a little further this way, then come back up to create kind of a V in there. And then cut this back that way. So there's a like a shovel on the end of it, a pointy end that'll fit into this cut in here. Now let me draw it with a pencil. So... something like that and that'll help the lock the the cap strip in there while the epoxy is drying or not while it's drying because it'll be clamped for that part of it but then when I remove the clamps and fiddle with it to start putting the gussets in place that'll help it to stay put I think so uh, I'll maybe I'll just try a few of those that way and see how that works out and you know you can you can deal with it. You can see I've got those gussets in place, but it may be a little bit more work to make sure that this doesn't pop off, pop out when you start putting pressure on it. So I'm going to try, try that on a couple. And after a couple minutes with a chisel, 
and hitting the end of the cap strip with the oscillating belt sander, that's what I get. It may make assembly a little bit easier. I'll give it a shot. Good sharp chisel makes all the difference. Actually, all your all your tools should be sharp. It'll give you a better result and is actually safer because it doesn't take as much force to get the job done. Anyway, a good sharp tool works better. Too bad. Let me get a little sharper corner in there. Just using the point of that chisel. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. It just took a few minutes. Should, should hold things a little more securely after I take the clamps off, before I get the gussets in place. So I've got uh, the jig in good shape here for a rib assembly. I'm just working on getting all the individual pieces made, which make up the structure of the rib, the internal structure, um, since the nose ribs are done and the, the top and bottom cap strips, there's really not, not much to make. And those, so those are ready to go. I've, I've cut these shape that notch in the end to fit into the nose rib. But I'm just, I've got some of these left over from the first time I built these ribs. I'm just go ahead, going ahead and making enough to build all the ribs. Um, I've got them just in little baggies here. And I've got a letter on each baggie. And I'm, I'm just using alphabetic characters starting at the front A, B, C, D, E, and so forth. Um, these are all the A's, these are the B's. I did those yesterday. I need to make more of the rest of these. Um, I need 20 pieces of all these internal ones. Um, I need more of the front ones and more of these. Um, and I think just maybe 14 of these last three. Um, some of different ribs are built differently. There's the butt ribs for the upper wing. 
there's ribs that go on each side of the aileron. Those are different. Butt rib for the lower wing. Or butt ribs for the lower wing. Um, and then there are six ribs that go in front of the aileron. So this portion basically will be gone of the rib because the aileron will be here instead of this. Three ribs on each side for the lower wing. Um, so it's not, it's kind of borderline whether there are enough pieces to make some kind of a jig for cutting. If I had to make a hundred of each one of these, obviously it'd be worth spending a little while making a nice jig to make uh, creating the pieces easy and consistent. As it is, 20, 25 pieces, 28 pieces for, for a few of them. It's sort of borderline whether it's worth it to make a jig. So what I'm going to do is just set this stop on my chop saw, a miter saw, um, for each length and cut as many as I need, 10 or 20, however many I have, have to make up here. And just chop off enough pieces and then just shape the ends on my oscillating belt sander. Um, so, you know, kind of making each one by hand just because there are so few to make. Um, for these vertical pieces, you can see I nailed some guides in place so that piece just fits between them and I hold it in place. I did that for this one, this one, this one. For these, you don't need it because they're just jammed in between these vertical pieces so they get held in place that way. Um, I'll, I'll put something in place here to, to hold these. Um, you can see I've got some shims here. Those are just feeler gauges for gapping spark plugs or whatever. Um, this one's five thousandths. This one's five thousandths. So the two on the inside are five thousandths. This is thirty-five thousandths. This is thirty-five thousandths. You have these bigger gaps, thirty-five thousandths, only on the upper ribs because those wings are swept. So the ribs will sit at an angle, six degree angle, to the spar. So you need a little more space in here, in between this piece and this piece, for the rib to rotate on the spar. You need extra space. For the lower wings, I'll remove this 25 and 10 thousandths um, feeler gauges and put a 5 in there as well. So there'll be a 5 here and a 5 here. That's just to provide enough space to slide the ribs onto the spars. But I don't need the 35 thousandths because the ribs in the lower wing just slide straight on square to the spar. The, the ribs slide on square to the spars. That goes for the front and the back. Remove these 35 thousandths, put in a 5 for the lower ribs. So I'll do that after I've made all the upper ribs. So that's pretty much it for ribs. Um, I'll cut out all these pieces and then I'll start gluing them up. And I've got all my got all my gussets, tons of gussets. So I'll probably start on that tomorrow. Probably spend a few several hours today making up all these pieces. So at this point I'm going to do the upper wing ribs. I've got 35 thousandths in shims here. When I switch to the lower wing ribs, I'll remove these and put a 5 thousandth um, feeler gauge in there. When I do that, I'll take out this T and put in a different T that pushes this back a little bit further to take up that difference. There'll be a 5 thousandth, five, five thousandth shim here and here for all the ribs. So I put a permanent block right here to hold those in place. I've got a little wedge here that's holding this in place because this is also 35 thousandths, thousandth. This is a 35 thousandth inch shim, that's hard to say. And it'll get removed and a 5 thousandth inch thick shim put in for the lower wing ribs when there's no sweep. And this little wedge will take up that slack. I could also put a block like that in right now and just take that out and put a different block in um, for the other wing. That actually might be easier. This is another idea I saw that someone else had and I thought it was clever. But I almost think this would be easier. 
put that block in and not worry about the shim. I think I may do that. Or not worry about the wedge. And then just tear it out and put in a different one once I replace these feeler gauges with the 5 thousandth, 5 thousandths inch thick one. Put a new block in that's closer. So, anywho, I've got all my pieces made. Took a few hours. Actually, not maybe as bad as I thought it would be. And piles for the last three here. So, I'm ready to get started putting the ribs together. And what I, what I think I'm going to do is not glue these up ahead of time. I think I'm just going to glue them up as part of the total assembly here. I'm going to see how that goes. Gluing them up ahead of time doesn't really seem to buy you too much. And the pieces don't tend to stay because probably because of this curve a little bit, the top one especially. And when I glue and nail the big gusset here, um, I think that'll hold it in place pretty well. Uh, even when I remove it from the, the jig, I'm going to plan on assembling it completely, remove it from the jig immediately, and then wipe down any excess um, epoxy with paper towels, and then I can immediately go ahead and build another one. And then later on, I can put all the gussets on the other side of those ribs that I've that I put together on the jig here. That's the idea.